Hi guys, we're back with sessions 28. Welcome to a new year 2010. Today we're going to talk about pharmacology for nurses. And of course you know we can only do a limited amount. So if you would take the trouble to go to dearnurses.net, you'll find that there are chapters there. It is actually going to be a book and it's going to be ongoing pharmacology for nurses. At different times, different chapters will be added so that will just be an ongoing clinical scenarios. Now let's talk about what you would expect to find. In this particular session we're going to discuss hospital admission, allergic reactions to medication, routes of administration, narcotics and its uses and side effects, and the do's and don'ts in the clinical setting. Now we all know that when a patient is admitted to the hospital there is a specific amount of information we need in order to know what is going to happen when the pharmacist gets his instructions. The doctor places an order and the pharmacy will assess by the patient's body weight, height, diagnosis, allergies, how to give this medication. So all of this is valuable information and should be documented on admission. <clears throat> now as far as allergies are concerned I wanted to point out to you it's extremely important to document whether a patient has had prior reactions to medications because you really don't know when you give medications what to expect. Some people can even go into respiratory distress after taking things like antibiotics. It, you cannot really anticipate drug reactions until you've actually given it to someone. Now how about the routes of administration? There are many routes of administration. Some of them are probably not even mentioned here. We give things by mouth. We give them topically when it's absorbed through the skin. It may be giving into the muscle. And do make sure that you shoot for the muscle when it's not just the superficial um, tissue which is subcutaneous. There are pain medications that are given like deep into the muscle. Then we have um, subcutaneous things, drugs like heparin and uh, insulin are given into the fatty tissue. Then we have things, some things are given by suppository. In the case of the patient who's vomiting and cannot take things by mouth, you may have to give a suppository when the doctor orders it. Sublingual, like drugs like nitroglycerin, Ativan can be given under the tongue and absorbed under the tongue. We have things that are given by inhalers. And also, um, we give things intravenously. And it's very important when you give things intravenously to pay attention to the IV sites make sure that that patient is not having any irritation, extravasation, because sometimes you can do tremendous damage to the soft tissue, not intentionally, just some people are very sensitive. Now let's take a look at narcotics. Narcotics are given very freely in the clinical setting. The doctor orders them. They're given for things like pain control, decreasing anxiety, anesthesia, but you know it's very important to pay attention when you give them not to ignore things like they do sometimes cause shallow respirations, lethargy in the case of some patients who are older, even young ones too. So pay close attention, record your vital signs, follow up after you've given a narcotic, things like Ativan, fentanyl, hydromorphone, make sure that that patient is not having, not necessarily an allergic reaction, just a side effect like getting extremely sleepy or maybe having decrease in respirations. Hallucinations also, mental confusion, some people may even experience itching and skin rashes and a decrease in blood pressure. Now how about some of the do's and don'ts? We know that we give injections. When you go to put it in the needle holder, you make sure that it's not too full. Take the case of this nurse. She takes a look and notices that the needle holder is full. But she says she'll just squeeze her syringe into it. Now what happens when this poor nurse gets stuck? She's going to wind up in the emergency room and do make sure if you get a needle stick that you should report it. And who knows what she gets from a dirty needle. So take the trouble if you have to put a needle into the needle holder, make good and sure that it's not too full. Typically it's supposed to be only three quarters full. Here's another case of what not to do. Here is a patient in the ER. There's just been a code. This patient has two drugs hanging, doctor's orders. One's dopamine, the other's potassium. But neither bag is labeled. 
how do you second guess which one's which? Make sure if you are a nurse who's been handed a doctor's order or anyone for that reason who's been handed a doctor's order that you carry it out the correct way. Make sure that you label your IV bags, you have the correct patient, the correct type of tubing because some medications need like a filter, things like TPN. All of these things are extremely important. Some drugs like amiodarone, they also need a filter. So make sure if you have a drug that's ordered, you take the trouble to label that medication correctly. Also the tubing, you need to check that your tubing has the correct date and time on it because after, I believe it's 72 hours, most institutions, I'm not sure that's ever changed. Make sure your institution's policies and procedures are carried out for changing IV tubings. So there is still a lot more to learn. Take the time to go to dearnurses.net and stay posted for more clinical issues and more chapters being added to the clinical um, pharmacology for nurses. Have a great week.